Hi everybody, this is Donna Lay, and if you have, say, 10 or 15 minutes to kill, and if you've got some runes or crystals or something like little incenses or herbs and you want something to put them in, here's a great little pouch. It'll just take you minutes to make. Uh, can you make a circle? Because if you can make a circle, you can make one of these. I can't make a circle personally. I use a pot and pan to trace around the edge, but this is what it looks like. Um, there's just a little pull tie. I like to put the beads on the end. When you open it up, you've got yourself a great pouch. So you can see that for runes and other goodies. When you open it up completely, you can use it as a spread cloth. So you can actually lay it flat on the table and you have yourself not only a, a practical carrying bag, but also a very functional spread cloth. And when you're done, you just pull it tight. If you want, you can then around and this is my gift for you so let's make one together it's very fast and it makes a cute little gift for a friend if you want a way to wrap something up you can put candies inside little rocks pebbles a pin you can put a little pair of earrings in there and it's, it's a very very cute way to, to present something so but also a way that you can keep your stuff here's a little perk as well because even though I chose for the lion to be on the outside that when I open it up use it as a spread cloth. If I wanted to, I could turn it over, put the runes inside, and it's completely reversible, so I can choose to use it on the other side as well. So it's kind of a little two-in-one package. So let's drive this bus and we will make one of these little babies together. Now I was never a person who really got into measuring. I use kind of like household items, so just faster and easier. So what you want to do is get a pot or a pan, and you want it to be maybe 10 inches across. Maybe that's probably about the smallest you want it to be. You can make it bigger if you want something for bigger rooms or crystals or something. And then, because can't make a circle, but trace a circle. So you get on the back side of your fabric. I'm gonna use this really cool jungle fabric to make my bag, and I'm gonna focus on this lion's head. So I'm gonna go on the back side, put him right in the middle of the circle. Now you don't have to have perfection here, but I'm gonna put my the edge of this over the table so that it doesn't lift up. There we go. And then get up the old pen because you're on the wrong side of the fabric and we'll be sewing later. You just kind of make your circle around. And then we're going to have it lined on the inside so you want to use some inside fabric too. Okay so there's our circle around our lion. I thought this fabric would go kind of neat in the back. You can use it. Cut oh, wow. out this circle and just use that to trace. So I'm going to trim right on that line. You can trim right outside it if you want it to be a little bigger. Just remember, it's always going to be smaller than it looks. On the line. There's my circle. Now I'm going to use the other fabric. Get the wrong side. It's a little hard to tell with this fabric. You can pin it if you want. This like this. No biggie if it's not exact because you'll be sewing within the lines and you can just trim off the extra. That's a very forgiving project. Okay, so now you have your circle and I'm going to keep the pins in it for right now and I'm just going to sew around. You probably want to go about a quarter inch just to keep this closed. You're only going to leave a little bit open so that you can turn it inside out. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm just going to sew this edge closed. So stay close to the edge, about a quarter inch. We want the back stitch to get it started. And you're just going to go around the whole circle. I'll meet you on the other side. When you're almost close, you're going to leave a little bit of a gap. I'm nearing the edge, so I started here, and I want to leave 
maybe four or five inches so I can turn this inside out. I'm just going to back stitch to kind of knot it. Take it out. And this is where you can trim off any extra fabric that you no longer want. So you can go around the edge. Some people may have pinking shears, which just makes a nice up and down kind of a um, pink. <laughs> to um, it prevents fraying the picking shears, allow things to bend out. And I like to leave it long where you tuck it in. Now here's where I'm going to turn it inside out. So I want to, because I probably can't put my whole hand in there, I'm just going to stick my thumb in and kind of press against the seam to flatten it out. You can use a ruler if you want to push it. The trick is just to get it pushed out right up against where you sewed. Like that. Now I'm going to sew this closed. Now if you want, you can hand sew it, make it invisible. Use a little whip stitch. Just go back up and forth. I'm lazy. I'm a lazy crafter. <laughs> I'm going to just go over this little spot. My thread doesn't even match, so you can see it. But basically, I'm just going to get it right up against the edge, fold it in. So that may be closed, that's all. All right, so now would be a good time to iron it, if you'd like to speed here and what you want to do at this point is sew again so this time you're going to sew we're going to make a little chamber for the ribbon to go through so we're going to go about maybe a half inch down that's however much extra frill you want at the top of it and then we're going to make one more just below it to kind of lock the, the ribbon in so i'm going to take a half inch and your sewing machine is usually marked you just follow the line on your sewing machine to keep it neat so about half an inch maybe the line in my sewing machine just to keep it as even as possible. I'm not even watching where the needle goes in. For our ribbon. So however wide your ribbon is, you're going to make another little tunnel. So you're going to make another little tunnel. I'm going to use the same spot that I have, and I'm going to use the edge of the presser foot as the measuring stick here. Again, you go right back to the beginning of where you started the stitch, the back stitch, and just like before. Trim the extra off. Now to get your ribbon, I'm going to choose blue for this. What you want to do is make at least enough for it to go around flat so you can actually just kind of start in one spot. And I'm just going to pin it or you can tape it just so you remember where you started. And kind of go like this with your finger around it just to kind of measure how much ribbon it's going to take. Now, this is nothing that's precision. It's okay if you're a little bit off. So then when you get to the end and it overlaps, what you want to do is leave a little bit extra. I'm going to leave maybe, I don't know, nine inches or something extra that I can play with. And I'll trim that. your safety pin out. Put the safety pin at the end of the ribbon. Now you've got to get the ribbon in there somehow. So choose which side that you think will be the outside most. I think it's going to be this guy. So I'm going to take a little spot, maybe 
you right where I started. I'm going to cut just a little bit on the outside to make a hole. You can do it this way, you can do it this way, just leave room for the ribbon. But don't cut your stitch because if you cut your stitch, if you cut your stitch, it could fray. So now you have an entrance. Your safety pin in, and you're just going to use that safety pin to guide your ribbon around your little chamber. The trick is, you want to make sure that your safety pin is smaller than your chamber. Mine just makes it, so it'll work out pretty well. And you keep going until you get back beginning you're opening and here I am I'm approaching there you go pull it up give it a good pull okay so I'm gonna even it out and what I would like to do is you can just now if you want tie this in a knot and be done I'm gonna jazz it up just a little bit I would like to add some beads to it to give it a little bit of um, sparkle so Pandora beads are very popular, and I found this kickoff. I think it was $3.99 or something at Walmart in the bead and craft section. They're the same sort of thing, but they're not $25 bucks a bead. So I'm going to put a few of these beads. What I like about this type of bead is that the hole is huge, so it's really easy to get through a ribbon, and it makes your life a whole lot easier. So I'm going to take off our safety pin line these up. Ribbons go through. See both ribbons go through one bead. Thing in between. So I'll use three beads. Three is a good number. If you're really crafty you can even make your own beads. not straight. If it's straight, it will fray. And there's my bag. So now you can use it as a little um, strip for few runes if you want to. Um, I'm going to actually use that. You can use the side as a spread cloth as well. You can put your runes right in the middle of it. And just once they're in the middle, give a nice pull. I hold in your thumb here. And you'll get a nice circle. And you've got a nice little pouch there. I could make this shorter if you want. If you don't want to lay it out flat, you can make it a lot shorter. But the thing is, if you make the ribbon too short, you won't be able to open it up and use it as a, fr a full spread cloth. So the choice is yours, however you want to do it. There's my little bag. Perfect for taking along on the side. And hope you have fun with it. It's a little rune bag.